Hi everyone, it's Kasia from Tarot Map and welcome to Inspired Tarot Map series. In this episode, I'm going to introduce to you Kazi from Sekem Tarot. And I have to say, I feel like I discovered Kazi <laughs> because I found you Kazi on Instagram and you are actually the first person I'm interviewing I've known uh, I don't know anything about I didn't know how you look so whenever you know when you switched on the camera it was the first time I saw your face and um, yeah but I love your Instagram feed and what you put out there. So I uh, contacted Kazi to ask him if he would like to share um, his tarot knowledge and his story with me in, on this series. And then I hope you guys will enjoy it and love it because he's a very inspirational guy. So welcome to the series, Kazi. Thank you so much. It's uh, an absolute honor. So, um, We've chatted a little bit. <laughs> Kazi has, uh, has shared some of his story with me, but I think I'm going to ask you to repeat a little bit for our audience. And this is uh, in accordance with our first question, in conjunction with the first question. And this is a question that I usually ask everybody on the series because I find it really interesting. Um, so usually I ask, you know, what's your ancestral lineage, where you're coming from, who your ancestors are, who kind of backs you up spiritually. But also in this case, um, I would like you to maybe speak also about your spiritual heritage. So um, your second tarot, but you said you're not Egyptian. So like, you know, how, how does it fit into everything? So there will be like two questions. First, your ancestral heritage and then maybe your spiritual kind of um, spiritual heritage what do you okay so uh um i am black or african-american uh and on my mother's side she is from irish extraction okay uh yes so powerful combo uh, and, right, <laughs> and those uh those things you know have later on played big parts in their own way now i was raised as a jehovah's witness uh which is basically just a format of christianity uh, but it's very strict in its doctrine and uh how they expect people to act but that was until i was maybe like 10 or 11. uh and then it was just the journey of curiosity and learning on my own which then led me to uh being introduced to and studying islam and as I went through that journey, uh, probably through my 20s, um, I reached a point then to where it was, I became rather nihilistic. I just didn't anything, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's God, spirituality or anything, I felt that uh, I just went to, to a state where I had to be, you know, kind of completely pragmatic and deal with life you know like that that didn't last long <laughs> yeah you know you you have that yearning and desire to to really reach out and find uh something that speaks to you about purpose and meaning that's when i started to um truthfully reach out and excuse me and uh study uh and ancient Egyptian uh, religion, philosophy, teachings, or commenting, as it is sometimes referred to. Uh, and that, in conjunction, I was doing that at the same time when I started to actually seriously uh, uh, learn about and study and start to work with the tarot. Okay, so uh, ancient Egyptian uh, spirituality or heritage would be close to you, just you, you feel like you connect and resonate with this the most, yes? Yeah? Um, yes, I, I, every other, every other so-called religion or, or format of spirituality, it never really spoke to me. Uh, and what I mean by that is that there was never that thing that was uh, just right in here. You know, when you spoke about it, when you thought about it, I mean, it was all about being righteous, you know, in whatever way and, and you know, doing you know whatever the right thing is according to whether it's the bible or the quran or whatnot and everything but it wasn't until i started to really uh, uh 
uh, you know, get into the comedic traditions that the, you know, who, how they refer to the Necheru uh, or the gods and goddesses uh, of the whole, you know, so-called path beyond or whatnot. That was, was instantly mm -hmm. resonant with me. And it, you know, when you feel like, okay, I'm home. You know, I'm home spiritually. I'm home, you know, within this whole thing. And all of the pieces start to kind of come together that way. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. So, um, as I said, I didn't know anything about you. I think you're the first person on this series that I kind of totally went blindly for <laughs> and like handpicked you through Instagram feed. So if you guys don't know um, Second Tarot on Instagram, I'm going to link uh, your um, feed below and link to your, um, to your, what is it, to your feed. And um, I would love you guys to check it out because that's what fascinated me and that was really like inspired me and you know awoken my curiosity is uh, what you like you put this beautiful kind of graphics but what you write on those graphics and sometimes on instagram you know we don't read too much beautiful picture like 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 move on but with your okay like in your case i always find myself like started you know i start reading and then i never stop reading i always <laughs> finish reading what you write and that's when i thought like wow this guy really is, like has something to say about tarot and in a way that I really appreciate and um, even though you know I'm not a master of tarot but I'm also have been learning I has been I have been learning tarot for a long time now and I still feel like I'm learning a lot from you you know from whatever you put your perspective how you put things out there and um, yeah it's just incredible so can you tell us a little bit more about yourself in general because as I said you, people go to your blog about section says not much <laughs> and um if you can just tell us about yourself as a person but also from tarot perspective do you work with tarot or a professional tarot reader um like you know like tell us a little bit about a little so, bit more about yourself so where everything that is in the blog uh where everything is you know really in the in, in the instagram feed or any of my content comes from the journey that i've been going through for the last like two years uh and just as we were just before as we had the little pregame show there <laughs> uh, when my jaw dropped so, yes, brace yes. yourself guys um, so so currently now i live in las vegas nevada and uh currently i'm homeless and i've been homeless for the last uh two years and when i first got out here i had to find something that i could build right so you know it, it started out just initially as you know kind of a hustle in terms of this is that i needed to build something that i could turn into a business you know something of that uh, of that type but i did not have any idea what that would be i just started writing you know i knew i had to get content right I, so i went to wordpress you know filled out all this stuff and, and now it's just an empty vessel right so so how come, like, sorry but like so you homeless but how come you homeless when you intelligent you have so much knowledge you know how to use wordpress <laughs> right you can do kind of whatever you want like where can you just tell me because i'm just really curious as i said Absolutely. before you know i was like i don't actually know a homeless person and you very wisely also noticed that you know homeless people are everywhere and we just choose not to see them or meet them or talk to them so yeah so, I, that's i think it's important if you don't mind sharing i would Love yeah, to know. yeah. So, okay. Well, first of all, so I'm I'm 46 years old. Okay, um, and a few years back, uh, you know, a couple of events. You know, I was met with several tragedies, kind of in a row. Mm. Uh, for one, uh, my mother, uh, she was sick, and she ended up uh, raising a frequency of passing, uh, which was, you know, that hit me hard. I, I found out some other news about, uh, you know, uh, some loved ones that was uh, just, just devastating. So that coupled uh, with the choices I was making at the time, as far as lifestyle uh, and everything, 
put me in a position to where I was I was in a very self destructive uh, 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 path. Yes, yes, and it was not going to be able to sustain itself. So you kind of it it forced me to that you know the the kind of literal uh, crossroads. You know, I could continue on my path, and that was you know going to just be more pain and suffering, or I could make the ultimate change. Okay. And I was terrified because I didn't, again, I didn't want to be homeless. That it was not that kind of choice. It was, you know, like, okay, fine. I'll just go through this. No, it came through just, you know, uh, uh, just through the most kind of uh, awful, you know, means and everything like that. But once I kind of got into the position, I accepted it. I, uh, had to learn very much to start accepting responsibility for the position and condition so that I wasn't like, well, if it wasn't for such and such, I wouldn't be in this position. I wouldn't be homeless or anything like that, you know, but at no rate, through that responsibility, I recognized it was my responsibility as well to raise myself up out of it. All right. So it wasn't like waiting around for some miracle or for some savior or anything like that. So I was looking for a vehicle for some sort of an enterprise of some type. And in my past, I'd had a couple of websites uh, that, you know, never really took off or anything like that. Uh, and but I knew that a little bit and I knew how to write somewhat. Uh, and I knew the tarot. And so I just grabbed onto that. And I just, again, I just started writing. And now, now through the writing process, okay, I've been working with the tarot for about 13 years, but this was the first time to where I, because the first thing I did was I detailed the major arcana, you know, each card, each story, each thing, and, and how it all, all, you know, is that main structure, that main core thing. And, and not just uh, metaphorically, but that main structure of life. So as I started detailing that, you know, the, the, the struggles, you know, my own little personal things, and that they were being uh, shown through that, you know, that prism, and then shown back at me, it started, it was a wonderful process of, you know, that alchemy, you know, that breaking down of the former, in order to allow the the greater self to emerge. And, you know, it was truthfully, uh, uh, it was therapeutic in, in several ways. One, it gave me something to do, you know, because I had to, you know, I wasn't just dwelling on, oh man, this sucks and everything like that. No, it was like, okay, I got to write. I got to build something here. And it also was, you know, through really getting down and, and getting into the, 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 the details and the nuance of every aspect of the tarot. And as that started to happen, you know, I, you know, it gave me purpose and meaning, but it also was just, it was giving me these tools. It was giving me, and coupled with several other things, by the way, another thing that was very important, and you've asked in certain things, I started reading a lot about personal development uh, and those types of things. Uh, I started listening to a lot of podcasts uh, and things like that. that were and that was about, after after you uh, became homeless, or yeah, before well, as well. Well, yeah, it, I was I was just opening up to to that kind of you know so called self help <laughs> stuff like that and everything and i used to not have the greatest opinion of of these types of things you know i was like well, i didn't, i don't need no help man for myself or anybody else i got it you know what i'm saying uh and i just thought it was like you know i i really thought it was kind of trite and, and and whatnot but it it was one of those things to where i it helped me to become a better individual uh, because the one of the main words was that, you know, learning how to take responsibility for your actions. So you're grabbing back that power and you're starting to recondition the way you're thinking. Uh, 
So rather than looking in things and seeing nothing but uh, pain and tragedy, you're seeing the miracle that, that is happening in every moment. And, you know, it's kind of like the hanged man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I was just yeah. thinking about tower also, you know, that like you're going through this humongous tower moment, but that's where the true kind of being comes through. That, that yeah, the limitation, yes, the suffering, yes, the pain, yes, there may be stupid choices or whatever, but it's kind of, you know, crashing down, but there is this rebirth um, that is possible through that. If you choose well, to. Yes, yes. And, and, you know, it's always important to, all, you know, when you really start to, to embrace the tarot and that story, the hero's journey, uh, it, it, you know, we look at the tower, we look at that, you know, that sequence of cards, as a matter of fact, which is always just, you know, eternally fascinating. So when you actually start to go into that, that lower uh, arc of the tarot uh, and you reach, you know, death, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh no. And then you reach, you know. <laughs> it can be worse. <laughs> it, oh, well, because well, then you're going to find the devil just a couple cards later, you know. And in between it, you have temperance and, and all of that, you know. But it's hitting these notes, right? So when you, you know, people look at the tower and, and I, I, I'm, I don't have a whole lot of experience, uh, you know, I'm just starting my practice. But any time that I'm working with someone else, and Lord forbid that card comes up, you know, because they, they might be looking at the other cards, you know, oh, that's the two of pentacles, you know, that's cute, you know, this and that, the tower hits, you see them like, they get very serious and their expression kind of changes. But you're right, you reach the tower, but then what's right after the tower? It's the one, you know, in most it's decks, beautiful. the most beautiful yeah. card in there is the star. The star, and that's right you know that hope and healing is right there and so you know whether it was dealing with the the personal development uh aspects of it you know uh, uh certain authors were very important uh you know people like napoleon hill uh with think and grow rich uh people like tony robbins uh those types of people uh and the tarot with that they were that was all harmonizing and you could see the similarities yeah. and indeed i you know i i then saw that opportunity in my own uh, uh work to to you know marry and manifest those messages you know so that it does become this thing again you know the tarot is such a powerful tool for development yeah. mental, emotional, and spiritual development. And so when we, when we kind of maybe just, you know, pigeonhole it into a sense of uh, uh, it's just for divination, which is fantastic, you know, but I think that we end up, yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we can speak sign language and it's going to be like, yeah, divination and terror. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a wonderful way to put it. Wonderful way to put it. But yeah, that is what has uh, uh, led to my work right now. So it was, you know, um, having something that was, you know, just, just so wonderful to, to hold on to. And now it, it is, you know, it has kind of taken on its own thing, the Kim Tarot itself. You know, it's, it's yeah. kind of blossomed outside of that and and it's it's much you know the, the possibilities and potentials now are, are so much greater than i ever thought it would have been yeah because i also wanted to ask so now do you like kind of choose because you start working on sekem tarot and as i spoke to you before you know i see you have a book to me like if i was a publisher i would be just going write that book and let's publish it uh, and i don't know guys what you think like read what he writes <laughs> he's got a beautiful blog as well which i'm going to link below and i'm just thinking like so um like why are you still homeless like is it something that you're working towards with the second tarot that you want to focus on this and you don't want to get out like can you explain a little bit more i might be stupid so, here but i'm curious oh, no. no 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 those are great questions um the the um so I wasn't ready when I first started Sakem Tarot to 
not be homeless. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. I, I, I truthfully had to go through the whole process. So when we talk about, say, for example, again, to just relate this back to, to, to um, the tarot, and we talk about that death card, right? You know, it, anytime, it, you know, if you're, if you're talking to someone who is not familiar with the arcana, we have to explain to them, no, well, it's not really a physical death and everything like that, you know. But whether it's a physical death or any other kind of death, it's still a very yes. traumatic experience. And it is something that you have to be willing to face, you know, in, in, in a fashion that it becomes the, uh, uh, it com becomes the opportunity rather than the end of yeah. something, right? So uh, when I was starting, like I said, I was just looking for a way to put together a platform and whatnot. As it is progressed, like I didn't know what I was going to do, how I was going to present it and everything, you know, what a product was or anything, how, any, how I was going to yeah. monetize it, how I was going to monetize it, to put it in those terms. Uh, but as I started getting deeper into it and, and just going through what I was going through and recognizing what I was going through, and thank goodness for the tarot, all the wisdom traditions and all of the, the, the other things that were available to, to me to help me kind of reflect on what that process was. So I had to completely get rid of the former self, okay, in order for me to be able to get on to this next season of my life. All right, because mm -hmm. I just, I did, I lacked the discipline, I lacked the vision, I lacked the uh, uh, just you know, will and sense of purpose uh, that that would help this to actually become what I want it to become, which is to actually become something that is will help others, by the way, go through, you know, because we're all going through our struggles, whether it's being homeless, you could be in a bad relationship, you could be in a bad yeah. job, you know. You can whatever. be a millionaire and be a prisoner to whatever. Uh, yeah. There it is. There it is. So, so again, that that's why when I look at my situation, and I get like being homeless for me is really kind of just an inconvenience. It's it, I've been through much, you know, worse situations and stuff like that. Uh, so this is, of course, it, you know, it, it, I'm not in any way glamorizing or romanticizing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a horrible, horrible thing, and I, I you know. But for me personally, it has been one of the greatest growing experiences that I've had. And that coupled with the tarot has um, um, truthfully helped to, uh, uh, you know, usher in this next season of my life. Yeah, wow, that's fascinating. And I think also, you know, when you go through suffering, when you go through your lows, and probably you hit your low at some point till, you know, and it kind of, you you hit the rock bottom, you, you hit kind of 10 of swords, <laughs> can't go any lower, unless you could, you could kill yourself probably, but you chose to resurrect. And I, I just find it like incredible um, asset when you work with other people. Because people who come for readings, they don't come smiley and with roses uh, behind their ears. Most of the people who come for readings, they might be the curious ones, you know, oh, I want to see how Kasia reads, let's say, or how uh, Kazi reads, you know, but most of people have some problems or they want to discuss something or something. And sometimes they might even not know that there is an issue or a deeper issue. You know, they come with a boyfriend and suddenly the whole wound of, I don't know, being left over or, you know, like lots of deep stuff comes up during a session. So I think that um, having to gone through this, what you went through in a conscious way and actually reawa reawoken, you know, through this and started to rebirth, I think that gives you like a great um, compassion and a great sense of, um, like this <laughs> because you were probably here 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 and you felt this and this and this and maybe even to the extreme that i might in my life never you know i might never feel it but um that's this beautiful kind of spectrum of experiences also well what you just said i you know you mentioned compassion 
right? And that has probably been the thing that this whole experience has taught me more than anything. Because mm -hmm. I used to, I, I, I can honestly say this, I was a very selfish, self-centered, uh, uh, you know, uh, even to the, to the point of being manipulative and, and those types of things. And, you know, when you do have things as powerful as the tarot or other things, those things can be used as vehicles to uh, You were the devil, and, right? Yeah. <laughs> Come. <laughs> just, Nothing just will happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're all friends here. We are oh, all yeah. friends here. What do you mean it's hot? It's, but the, when when I learned to through that process of letting go of who I was, not even just letting go. I describe it like this. I I was having a conversation before this uh, with a young man, and uh, you know I said, man, look, if you really want to make these changes in your life. You've got to look at who you are right now and you have to actually become angry enough that you want to destroy that person. You know, you want to kill that person. You have to actually be that. You have to pick up the, you know, that side and you have to cut down who you are now in order for your greatness to finally emerge. Cause so that's what I had to do. I just had to become completely disgusted with with who I was and be completely determined that that person was not going to um, was not going to be allowed to have any sway in my life anymore and that oh, that means yeah so so they had to be completely eliminated and so again that you know when we look at the whole process of the major arcana or even when we look at the process like you mentioned the, the ten of swords right uh, you know, everybody again. It's one of those one of those tragedy cards. It's like, oh my gosh, what's this? Do, 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 and everything. But I always look at it as this. I think I kind of describe it in my uh, on my blog and, and as that's a time to rejoice, okay? Because if we're looking at who that was, who's laying there? Most people, unfortunately, identify themselves as that person or uh, 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 someone else that maybe they dislike or something, right? And so it's like, oh, but I always look at it, again, we're dealing with the swords, right? So we're dealing with the element of the mind, yeah. okay? So when we, when we finally come to a point where there are enough facts, say for example, if we were to put each one of those swords as a, as a number of facts yeah. that were lined up and then plunged into something that, was no longer useful to us. So now we're free, you know? So we, we take those 10 swords and we, you know what I'm saying? We use them how a sword was intended to be used, uh, which is to eliminate something yeah. that, that <laughs> there it is. So then we- even, but you're right. Like, I think Ryder with Smith depiction, it's a little bit limiting because of that lying man, but, um, Tarot de Marseille, for example, totally allows that, you know, when you don't have that person lying down. I mean, I love this image for how it, you know, makes your mind kind of wander and escape. And you can see where it like, oh, just, you know, sometimes you can really recognize your own blockages as well and limitations. But in Tarot de Marseille, I think you can go in so many different uh, variations. You can go, oh, well, you finished your project. Well done, yeah, 10 swords, you know, but when you see this guy lying down, I mean, you can still go with the project, but it's a bit dramatic image. Right, <laughs> <just> like... right. <laughs> but yeah, you're I right, you're totally right. I think that's, and, and not to go off subject here, but I think that comes from, you know, uh, uh, you know Pamela Coleman-Smith, and her background was in theater. So she was, she was, she was good at, at using drama to provoke uh, a reaction out of people and that's what you want to do you don't you know if, if you know when we look at some of the ancient decks right that were just basically pip cards if you don't know what that means it's just a, it's a nice design that's fantastic but it does not have any real impact on you but if you look at you know if you actually look at oh my god there that is you know what I'm saying or even even uh, uh in the uh um Lady Frida Harris, in her depiction, say, for example, of the Nine of Swords, which is the previous one, which, when you look at it, it truthfully is, it'll make your gut rumble, 
because it, it, you know, it looks like flesh rending and, and stuff like that. And it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But again, if we, if we, if we make the mistake of saying we're going to be too literal, okay, then, then we're missing the whole point. But this uh, is so, so cool. This is first time when I actually felt um, really supportive of this two system because I'm usually like really advocating for Tara de Marseille, but you're right, it's not an emotional system. And I think that right. that's exactly what you said. Very simple. Like pictures do make me emotional when I see them and they kind of demand a reaction. They demand. You cannot not have a reaction. When you don't have it, maybe it's fine. <laughs> you don't have to deal with this archetype. But <laughs> well, usually when you see 10 of swords in your reading, like it's, you probably will have some form of reaction. <laughs> so yeah, that's interesting. So uh, what's your favorite system then of tarot? So... So that's, and I'm, uh, we, we said that beautifully here. Uh, when I first, <laughs> when I first um, got into this situation uh, and I started, uh, uh, you know, with Sakem Tarot, so I started writing and, and doing all of this work uh, that's currently out, I had a Thoth deck. Okay, so I had the Crowley uh, uh, and, and Lady Frida Harris deck. Uh, and I had avoided uh, that deck for a long time. So can uh, I just this step, like, did you have this deck from before? You kept it with you or how did you, you just got, got the deck? No, I, because previously I'd lost everything. So previous to becoming homeless, I lost all of my possessions, period, uh, including all the decks that I had. Okay. So no, I, I had a friend and she was uh, uh, wonderful enough because I was discussing this project with her and she said, what do you need? Okay. So we went and got the, and, the, and I was, you know, I'm in front of a bunch of different decks that, you know, some Just I recognize, one. some I don't. Yeah. And, it's, and I'm looking and I said, you know, now's the, now's the bit of time as any uh, to, to really dig into this, which again, I've, I've been intimidated by. Uh, and you know, it, it has this this ridiculous reputation. Uh, you know, is it is all that? And but that there became so uh, just. I, it, it was such a moving experience. And mind you, I was in that position to truthfully be moved. You know, I was I was open to it, but it truthfully kind of like I was describing uh, previously about my when I was having uh, all of my religious, you know, investigations and experiences, whether it was Jehovah's Witness or Islam or whatnot. None of those spoke to me. None of them reached out and, and you know, embraced me uh, uh, to a way I could feel. And it wasn't until I was introduced uh, fully, uh, you know, and, to the Neche rule, you know, to the, the, the comedic traditions, uh, did I finally feel at home. So the thought that uh, had a, a very similar thing to me. I was, it just, it spoke so much to me and I would just become just so, just, you know, you, you go in there and you're so fascinated by those, I guess you would call them tarot scapes that she created, uh, you know, the, it, and, and, you know, the fascinating thing of when, when she produced that, um, you know, her style of art was so innovative uh, for that time, you know, now we kind of take it for granted because there's been so many, it's been so influential that it kind of permeates you know, all of tarot and, you know, uh, uh, outside of that. But her, it was, there was just such a level of sophistication. Uh, and and it, it just, and the, the, the marrying of her mastery of art and the doctrines that, that Crowley had, his depth of knowledge, and how she was really able to capture something that was, you know, so complex. So it, it just, you know, it spoke to me. And here's, here's a funny thing that happened, well, not funny, but <laughs> that deck a couple of months ago got stolen. Uh, yes, while I was, and this, is, and this is just a homeless story, but while yeah. I was... So I was sleeping and uh, I woke up and somebody had grabbed a couple of my bags and was running across the field and I gave chase and uh, I couldn't, you know, they, there was a bunch of stuff they left and other things, but 
that got taken. Oh, and no. I, I was, I was true. It, it, it really, that was one of those things. That and the copy of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, just truthfully, uh, uh, those were two things that had helped me get through, uh, uh, you know, some of the harshest times in that. But So can yeah. I send you the tough deck? Is it okay? Uh, oh, no, you know, I have. But I want I, to. I have, okay. I have so many decks. I have like three top decks lying around, but I'm, oh, I just would right? have to send it to you. Yeah, sure. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, I will, I'll let you, you have know to give that. me the, the library address, won't you? <laughs> well, I, I think I can have you send it to a friend. I have yeah. a friend that might oh, be able cool. to receive it for me. Yeah, I, I prefer a little parcel, a little tile yes. parcel with a surprise so that you don't know about everything. That's cool. <laughs> I mean, it's a pity that they stole your deck because you probably got used to this deck and yeah, it sucks. It, it was, it was, and again, it was just so, you know, again, that was one of those things. It, that was the journey. So I think that, that and, and this is one of those things. So if you would look at the blog now, especially the stuff I was writing originally, um, when I was doing my, you know, core work on the uh, major arcana and the, the minors, that was, you can probably see the, the the influence that I had of the thought deck. And even then I was, for the first time, I was actually learning, you know, I was reading Crowley's work and, you know. <laughs> you went to the source, that's good. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, start I, with Duque, Don Milo, look, yes. me, what is it? Don Milo Duque. Yes, was, who is wonderful. But I, yeah, I, I, I unfortunately, I, I, gotten about two or three uh, uh, other books that were supposedly you know about the thought deck but they all seem to be these weird personal reworkings of interpretations that I mean even me I was looking at said that doesn't that really doesn't align with the way I'm looking at things they were it, it's like almost I see people deal with the thought deck and they feel almost obligated to like you know soften it up like mm. give a Disney version of it or something like that. They're like, you know? and I, I I'm know like, the books you're talking about, but let's not mention. <laughs> okay. So I'm like, look, no, let's let's see that. And so when I'm reading Crowley, even though it was it was uh, you know that's some dense work right there, and you know it's it's almost impenetrable in in certain ways, but it still spoke to me. He has a very uh, uh, of course, unique way of writing, uh, but that's part of what was spoke to me. It was like, okay, he's he's gonna he's gonna try to hit you uh, the same way that uh, 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 Lady Frida Harris's art hits you. So he's hitting. And she's you amazing. Words. Sorry, oh, I was just right. thinking, you know, about her art. That if she painted it right now, it would be not like it would be still innovative, you know. Like, and she painted it like that long ago, you know, the nineteen thirties or. Yes. Like incredible vision and uh, like just how um, futuristic it looked then it still looks Absolutely. quite awesome you know yeah no it was and so and now now interestingly enough I, I've, I've went back and um, uh, I had to get another deck and I actually just ended up I said you know what let's just go with the classic so I currently have a uh, um, a rider weight uh, Smith, so just to let you know. But ah, so that's yeah. why suddenly your pictures started changing on IG ah, that you were, because you were posting mostly with Toph, and then at yeah. some point I noticed, yeah. oh, he's obviously like the writer with Smith as well. But yeah. here we have <laughs> <laughs> that is very observant, that is incredibly <laughs> observant. I love that, I love that, you know. And those weren't just images I pulled off the internet, so. <laughs> So, so do yeah. you do your graphics yourself? Feel like you 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 know this stuff because to do this graphic you use applications or I use I use well I use a number of applications right now. Uh, but yeah, I do the graphics myself. I use the things I use right now are uh, photo Photoshop Express, uh, which is a free app, and it it can be a little bit overwhelming if you're just starting. Yeah. to kind of deal with those types of things like overlaying your graphics. Another great tool is something called Snapseed, uh, which will help you to, you know, format, and do your colors, all that. Uh, but my main, my main thing is Canva, 
Yeah, Canva. I know Canva. Real. Yeah, Canva um, is yes. cool. I do yes, all yes. my, you know, YouTube, um, YouTube thumbnails with Canva. Yeah. Yes, yes. That is that has been invaluable uh, yeah. to have available because you can put out something that looks good. It doesn't take a lot of time, and yeah. it's just so versatile and stuff. So it's fantastic. it's fantastic. Yeah, that's true, and it's quite simple to use. Actually, you don't get too overwhelmed because I'm not very technical. So. Photoshop is for me a bit like, I don't know, I have to take like <laughs> lessons, <laughs> yes. it, but yeah. Okay. So the question was, how do you see Tarot's role in your life? We kind of answered that really, because for you, Tarot was like, that's what also, you know, it's quite amazing because in your story, Tarot takes on another role. It's like a lifesaver and a savior. And it's also um, that kind of spark of inspiration that probably just makes you be excited about life in general hey absolutely absolutely and that's i i really when i again when i was first starting i was like okay i just need to you know i was i was just trying to figure out how to how to you know uh, uh be able to you know just generate something out of it you know which mind you to this day okay uh this whole enterprise has made me zero dollars <laughs> so, but you know what but, i think also this is part of the initiation in some way that you take this trust the step sometimes in the beginning it brings nothing it was like me the same first two years you know i was giving readings for like two dollars just to kind of um learn something so i didn't want to do it quite for free but it was you know for free really but uh i just wanted to learn because obviously i also didn't trust my skills so you know i was just constantly going i want to practice i want to practice so practice on friends practice on whoever but you know slowly slowly and i think that's what you did that's this trust that you went for it even though you didn't know exactly where you're going with it what's going to happen with it i think this is like a beginning of a beautiful story because that's i think that's how initiation takes you and when you follow you just never know what might happen you might suddenly you know as i said write a book and be a published author in a year time it can happen just like this especially in um, this reality when things just Right. Well, yeah. for example, I mean, I because, you know, uh, I've only been working with Instagram, I think, for the last five months, something like that. Previous, I can't believe I found you straight yeah, away. I can't either. That's, that's, it was a wonderful thing. You know, I'm going to tell you, that was, it, it, it was, uh, I remember because I was just sitting here, you know, I was doing my regular thing, you know, writing, reading, whatever. And I remember seeing and I was going through the feed and I saw yours and it said, hey, check out, you know, this and this. And you actually showed some of my work on your thing. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I, I actually had to get up and go outside, take some breaths and stuff. <laughs> I felt like, I, you know, I've been discovered. Uh, but <laughs> yes, it's, it's all happening. Yeah. <laughs> By the Polish, Polish communist child. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I had, and I was like, "Who is it?" Uh, but it was, it was so wonderful. But the most important thing about that is, again, uh, Instagram. I know that you've talked with this. Uh, I think you touched on this uh, with a couple of other people who've been on here. Uh, is you know, as a platform, it is so much as a social media platform. It is so much better than the previous. Uh, ones because I again I used to you know I did I, I was trying to get a little bit of a, a you know penetration on uh, Facebook, Facebook and, you know, I was in there a little bit but it was just I couldn't I couldn't get a, I don't know if it's because it'd been around so long and I was starting at, at, at a certain place but I just could not get my, my uh, uh, footing there and it was wonderful as soon as I got on uh, Instagram you know it's you know i experienced you know instant growth not a lot of growth not not something that was you know extraordinary but that's you know taking those incremental steps and number two when when you know you or there's some other people out there who you know reach out and say hey i appreciate what you're doing you know i yeah. like what you what you're doing that yeah that means the world and you because otherwise you just you you could be posting every day and then you know there's not a ripple in the ocean and you're like why am i doing this and everything but you have been uh, just so gracious with your time and your your whole uh, uh the light that you shine out and everything 
that I was like, wow. And then when you asked me then to be on here, I, I believe me, like I, I said before, I, I, I went and I took the time to go through each one of your, uh, uh, your, your previous episodes. And I was, I was just intimidated because I said, oh, wow, I can't, I can't hold a candle uh, uh, to these wonderful women. I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, and everything. And I, I, you know, I was trying to like looking for, for a way to back out. But no, no, no. <laughs> no, not today. Gosh, uh, I got you, no. <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful. If there's one thing, too, though, this experience has taught me, uh, you know, whether it's through the tarot, like I said, through, through uh, other sources that have strengthened and, and enlightened me in so many ways. It is about learning how to say yes, mm. okay? Because, you know, they always say, oh, well, you got to learn how to say no. No, learn how to say yes to things even when you don't feel you're ready. Figure out how to get ready, how to be ready, you know? You know, get that, that drive, that, that whatever that force is in you and say, you know what? This, this is an opportunity, and if I don't take it now, it may never arrive again. Yeah, and as we spoke so. about, you know, that um, you wanted your work to stand by itself and not, you know, the backup story to take a forefront, I think your work totally stood by itself because, as I said, I knew nothing about you at all. I even thought you were probably Egyptian and... <laughs> 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 and then I somehow met you because I went to Egypt, you know, and it's all this. I saw my own uh, synchronicity in this. So for me to find out, you know, your backstory and stuff, um, as I said, I, that, not that it doesn't matter, but in terms of your work and what you have to offer, it really does not matter because your work is um, just precious, I think, and very valid uh, by itself. So whatever you share, I hope you keep doing it and... I think it's going to um, yeah, grow and bring you money so that you can actually live the life um, that you want. Because it's important, that, yeah. No, it is. And again, I, you know, another part of that too is I, you know, I look at the tarot as being such a, a wonderful and sacred tool uh, and everything. And, you know, I didn't want to come at it as just being mercenary. Uh, and saying, oh, well, yeah, you know, $20, $20 for a read, I'm down here, you know what I'm saying, you know, you get on Craigslist or, or Fiverr, whatever. Uh, I really wanted to make sure that, you know, because you kind of have to prove your bona fides. Uh, mm -hmm. like, like you were saying about, you know, you were just doing readings for like, you know, $2 or whatnot and everything to sharpen yourself up, which is how you have to do it. You know, you pay your dues. And for me, that process was being able to, take these wonderful concepts and to to find my own unique voice with them and at the same time uh look how to make it accessible throughout so that means like not just the people who even though i wanted to be able to talk and speak in that language that would resonate with folks who are already experienced with the tarot you know who know and love or just the yeah. community at the same time, I wanted it to be something that if somebody never even had seen a tarot card in their life, didn't know it, that they would be able to extract uh, uh, some value out of it. And, you know, to say, okay, I get that and everything. And then open up that door uh, that goes beyond all of the misconceptions and, and superstitions and, and all of those, you know, things like that. So. I hope that, you know, uh, uh, I can, uh, I have accomplished that on some level and will continue to have the uh, honor and opportunity to uh, uh, move forward with that. Yeah, and I think, you know, in some way through this process, it's like respecting Taro, is you respect your tool. You don't just like disrespect it, you know, you find your way through it, you learn and um, yeah, what then you have to offer. And of, also, you know, there's just something important about sharing, I think. Because when I, I had a blog in Polish, you know, when I was actually learning tarot, and people loved reading it. And I wasn't at all any specialist of tarot. Like, I was learning tarot, so I was writing about me learning. And basically, I was just like... To learn, I was reading different books, writing different things about archetypes. You know, I was also reading Tov, uh, Crowley's book, um, like the original, you know, writing, trying to figure out what is he saying, you know. <laughs> and um, 
people loved it. And that's also, I think, some form of um, like a pilgrimage into your tool or with your tool, you know, to who knows even Absolutely. where and what, but it takes this uh, beautiful connection that you build with the tool. And that's, then you two speak and you have your own unique language because, uh, yeah, like, I seriously really love reading it. And, you know, as we were laughing, like, like, like photo of Instagram. But, yeah, I keep reading your posts and you definitely have talent in writing. So, yeah, I'm buying that book. <laughs> it's coming out at some point. I see it. I see it. I, well, I, you see know it. what? You're making me believe it more than any I totally see it. But I even saw it before we know, before we talked. So I, I really had this image like, wow, this guy has a book. Like, he should print a book so if anyone listens to us who is in <laughs> who is in like is. publishing uh, book, then please contact us <laughs> I, it, it would be it would be a wonderful thing all the way around that's good publicity for them yeah uh, yeah yeah uh, the, the story's already baked in you know what I'm saying that's uh, so cool it no, is, but that's it is. interesting so um tough would be your favorite tarot system do you have a favorite yeah. card uh yeah uh that would be from the thought the thought deck uh the star, the star. As, yes i look at that card and again we, we've been we've been raving about her art but i think that that particular card is almost like it transports you you can't help it you the more you look at it the more it is just pulling you into like this other world or dimension or whatnot and there is you know she uses these you know these these sharp angles uh, uh like when you see the water uh, uh coming out of the vessels or, or whatever you uh but there's still you know there's that that beautiful marriage of of the soft curves and mm -hmm. and the sharpness and Fly. yes, and yes, and it's it is just so fascinating. It's very, and I mean, the star card in most decks uh, is usually one of the most. You know, again, it, it's all subjective, but you know, the star card usually is where people up the uh, yeah. uh, you know the beauty measure uh, in, in the aesthetic and everything. Yeah, okay. so um, I'm just looking at these questions because I don't want to make it very long. I don't know even what time we started. <laughs> I think we started we, we started about an hour ago. I think because uh, it was eight, but we were we were talking before I pressed record, yes. so we still have some time. Yes. Okay. So um, I still have a few questions here. So um, are you a self-taught tarot reader? Or when it comes to study? No, I didn't study with any individual. I, I've always, uh, you know, I'm a lover of books. Uh, and so if I want to learn something, whatever it is, I, that's, that's going to be my first thing. Uh, as far as, you know, there were a couple of books that ended up being very uh, uh, important in me actually understanding the, the deeper nuance and structure of the tarot. So one book was uh, Tarot and the, uh, the Hero's Journey. I forget that man's name. I was, I, I was supposed to have looked it up, but yeah. that was the, I think his name's Hanzo or something. Goodness, I'm, I'm, it's my Yeah, father. Maybe when you remember, you can write me on Instagram or something. Yes, yeah. but it, he, uh, he detailed for me uh, well, for everybody, but for me, it, the the whole hero's journey, okay? Uh, so when we're talking kind of like about the, you know, uh, a Joseph Campbell or the Yin Yin uh, interpretations, and he broke it down in that piece, which, you know, you can sit there and you can look up meanings for days, and you're like, okay, that's great. But if you don't have that connected through line, that whole tissue for it to actually say, ah, that makes sense. I understand. You go from here to here to here. And of course, that was one of the first books I read about tarot that really, you know, impacted me. But indeed, that was the influence. So when I was going, when I'm going through right now, you know, I was able to relate that directly to me. I said, oh, this is that journey. This is, mm. you know what I'm saying, the, the dark night of the soul or, or whatnot and everything. Uh, it's like those... you took it to this archetypal level. I think that's healing. That's where the healing comes from. When you can kind of 
it's it's like believing in god that's what you kind of did it's this archetypal level lifts the spirit somehow i don't even you know i don't know how to say it but no, no, that's, that's that. absolutely correct that's absolutely correct uh other than than here that book uh mary Kay greer uh, uh 21 ways to re read a, a tarot card was very useful uh, but the the last book that truthfully helped me to to, to elevate uh, my whole view of of the tarot uh, was uh, Tarot of the Bohem Bohemians uh, by Pappas. Mm, classic. Uh, yes, and I haven't now, read it. Oh my goodness! Really? I'm sorry. Wow. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. I go that, to school. <laughs> I know. I know. It was. He, I think, really was because okay, me, I'm, I'm kind of a, a what do you say, left brain. I'm very analytical, and I like to have things. You know, I'm saying, okay, here, here, here. I think that's you know, I, you know, we all have our intuitive side, which is fantastic. But I was always looking like, okay, how do I grasp onto this? How do I tell my logical self this makes sense? And Tarot of the Bohemians, you know, just breaks down the system, you know, based on the what, what Tetra uh, Grammaton, uh, breaks it down of how it moves from, from each of the, you know, the Yadi Bahi uh, steps and how that flows all the way through the Tarot. And that, and through that connection, you know, it all makes sense. So that was really that gave me one of the biggest aha moments oh wow uh, you're really I, making me read it now right. <laughs> I no, really, i'm going to grab it tomorrow <laughs> i would say it was funny because when i had uh, <clears throat> when i excuse me when i was uh made the decision to, to actually read it uh, i was also reading uh what is it the pictorial key yeah uh, by what? yeah and it was i read those in in uh, uh one after the other first first uh, the pictorial key and then the tarot of the bohemians and it was so funny because it was like two going to two different professors right and one of the professors we're talking about wait was, was this kind of stodgy and ornery and you know are you gonna get this i'm gonna tell you a little bit don't bother me too much Papish's writing style was like, you know what I'm saying, so inviting. It was like, you know, it's like that professor, come in, come in, sit down. Would you like something to drink? You know, oh, do you have any cool. questions? How's your dog? <laughs> Those types of things. He was excited to share the knowledge and excited that, it, you know, he was in a position to share the knowledge. And so wow, cool. I would definitely uh, uh, recommend that. And it was very important to me. Yeah, it's such a classic. I kind of, I don't know how I skipped it, but I think sometimes because I'm more right brain, <laughs> I'm kind of like, oh, classic. Okay, I read through the pictorial key as well and I was going, that's so boring. I don't know. Right. But, you know, I, I like to go to the source as well because like I love to see how the, you know, the meanings have changed in the Vinatari, um, how he sometimes describes totally different attributes to the cards that we see now and how that evolves so this is really interesting but yeah so what star sign are you can you tell me i'm a libra are you a libra yay i've got a moon in libra but i was wondering like where uh yeah what you uh, you would be the analytical one <laughs> i'm analyzing my emotions <laughs> okay so you talked about favorite books um this and yeah so we kind of arrived at the last question and okay. the last question is usually when i ask people to share something like a way they like to use tarot cards uh, it can be a spread a little exercise something that helped you or that you use that maybe people can try at home something practical do you have anything so what i'm working on once again this go this is wonderful Wonderful segue. <laughs> what I'm working on right now is I'm putting together kind of a signature spread, I guess you would say. And it's kind of based on that uh, tetragrammaton uh, uh, structure that uh, Pappas explains. Yeah. And it's, it's simply going from that situation of, it's a, it's a, a, a four card spread, but I want it to be, I'm trying to make sure that it's universal and practical. Okay, so it just basically we we guide 
through the first spell cards and it just goes from pure potential to what the purpose is what the process is and where your power is and we always the, the way the structure is is to keep almost kind of like not really deacons but to keep those structures uh, of the original cards in those positions so say for example when we're asking for that pure potential no matter what card is there it's being presented to us by the magician or the mages Okay. okay. And then when we go deeper and we're asking what is the purpose of this, then we're always going to be presented that by the high priestess. And then into the process, which would be the empress, and finally the power, which is expressed empress. by the emperor. Right. And so you're so, going to write a blog about it that I can maybe link because I think it will be easier to see also then just you know for people to maybe get from the spoken like how you uh, tell us yeah. about it that i yeah. could link a, uh, i could link um, the blog under the description I, I, box well i i haven't i haven't written it quite yet so but that's okay I, because uh, we're recording now but i have okay. one more interview to post before yours and i don't want to you know i don't post them like every week i post them every two to three weeks so you've got time Fantastic. I will. Uh, now You've got I, like now three have, weeks to. Now, now I have an assignment. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I feel like I could get up. Okay, I got to write this now. Wait, wait, there we go. I got a pen already. Let's go. Oh, Let's go. That's funny. No, because that sounds very interesting, but I can um, probably, you know, I can understand it. So people maybe who know Taro very well can understand it. But if you some of our audience who is not as familiar with every archetype you know sometimes people just start they don't know exactly the uh, what comes after so i think it would be better when they see it um, yes. because it will be probably yes. much more um graspable for people yes absolutely absolutely we want everybody to comprehend yeah uh, yeah yes yes so would you like to share anything else like with our I, audience or? No, and, and unfortunately, my power thing, I didn't bring my cord in here. <gasps> it's so dying. I have, I have like 7% and I, I <laughs> but we're right on time. It's, it's perfect uh, timing. Time. Yes, yes. Once again, all of this has come <laughs> together in, in, in just a wonderful, like, yeah, right synchronicity. Voila and everything but yeah so no. wonderful. well i'm so glad that we got together and that i got to meet you and Absolutely. thank you so much for agreeing and open you know sharing about your life and your entire journey i think it's really inspiring and i don't know if i knew maybe before i wouldn't maybe approach you even you know but that's is <laughs> like see that is so funny <laughs> and not because i don't want to have anything to do with a homeless person i just would feel that maybe that would be I don't know. I would I would feel self conscious. That's so weird. Why do we? Well, I you know you know it's one of those things. Again, I, I'm I'm glad that we had the the kind of pre interview time again, so so yeah. that we could we could do that. I didn't want to just spring it on you and everything. But I and and mind you, you know, I I talked to players for a while. If that was something that I did want to share, if it was something that yeah. again I didn't want to it just come off as as using cheap gimmicks and. Like yeah that. no but it's, i think it's people. cool yeah it's great and I, and because i think, I think it's important to share also you know because we just yeah we're just blind to so much in life and your story comes with this amazing um twist of faith you know which hopefully will resolve to your highest good as soon as you know as possible and um yeah i really fingers crossed here and I hope that your second tarot will grow. And um, yeah, I just hope you're going to teach. You also have this amazing ability, I wanted to tell you as well, to yeah, make this, these things um, approachable. And when I read your post, like, I felt like you're a good teacher. You just can explain things. And that's really something else you can look into, like running a course or... Yeah, okay. Like, yeah. Well, no, right. and I, I, I do have those things coming. My thing is that's so rude, but yeah, it's I'm on five percent. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. No. Get a little dead there and everything. We're saying goodbye now, so bye. Absolutely. Everybody. Thank you I'm so much, Tasha. And okay. we're 